so in that sense Massa Critica joined different movements and again in a way uh, it did renounce actually I mean I'm saying this also as a critical reflection after uh, something like six years from then um, in a way it was able to uh, push uh, different topics in the city but still uh, being able to be in a way autonomous with respect to the city government so maintaining the possibility of critics and conflicts with regards to the city government at the same time of course uh, with this choice of not running directly for election it renounced to uh, have itself the power of course in the city La Silo was occupied by workers in uh, of the sector of arts and culture. Very soon, the um, occupation was uh, translated into something else. So the idea was to really open the space to the city as a whole. And then the, um, it started with this new uh, political and institutional experiment, uh, which is to say that the community itself uh, imagined actually a, a new legal tool for the management of commons. This legal tool is the urban, civic and collective use, uh, which was uh, based on the recognition by the city of a declaration which was written by the community itself in open assemblies. So basically there was no entrustment of the space to some specific person or collective organization but rather um, a declaration which was like a little constitution of the space which was recognized by the city which then did recognize the self-regulation of the community over the space uh, maybe you know that in italy there is a debate over the um, uh, national law on commons and we are trying to uh, to um, open up this debate so that commoners, people that every day live commons are involved as well. You know, usually uh, law are made by uh, par the parliament with some selected experts. And the idea is to rise abroad, open and expert debate with commoners themselves. We recognize that being elected to power is only one step in the kind of radical municipalism process because it's the, the, the institutions themselves are so soaked in kind of managerialism and neoliberal um, senses of re reality that process of radical municipalism in a city like Glasgow will be a, a long-term project um, and, and must be understood as transformative rather than reformist and one of the things that which has given us energy for that process is the the fact that a climate emergency has been um you know recognized at the city level as well as at the national level and those people involved in the development of the people's plan are using this as a stimulus to um, challenge the, the, the capitalists yeah, vision of the, of the future and to try and bring a much richer, more varied yeah, civic imagination to the, to the city. Um, and and fr from our perspective, we, we recognise, and, and this is, I think, the commonality against uh, among the municipalist movement is that this is is not a movement of the moment it's a movement of the future of now and we will be it will not be a straight journey in terms of changing these institutions and moving these mindsets forward there will be movements forward and movements back um and I, I think the answer is to, to the depth of our engagement. I thought Bruno gave a you know really interesting example of how quite quickly they had able to change, you start to affect the culture around how people felt within that city. And 
I think that even more important than the changes to the institutions is that change of cultural mindset. Once people have a have, a, have an experience of democratic process and and that more direct decision making, that is the that is the security that we start to build into this transformative change. Des choses comme ça, mais ce qui est intéressant, c'est c'est le regard qui a changé. Les gens qui nous disent, euh, on sent de la proximité, on sent que on a la possibilité de proposer des choses, de partager. Et, et par exemple, nous sommes sur le marché toutes les semaines. Le samedi, et il y a un stand qui s'appelle la Maison de la Citoyenneté pour permettre aux gens de discuter, d'échanger, de proposer des idées. Et aussi, nous avons fait quelque chose d'intéressant. Nous avons été voir les gens après les élections. Nous tapons aux portes et, et les gens nous disent « Mais qu'est-ce qui se passe Il y a des élections ?» On dit « Non, on veut juste vous faire participer. » Voilà. Donc, les, les résultats, nous les verrons dans quelques temps, mais pour l'instant, c'est surtout des, des regards qui changent. Voilà. Euh, Est-ce que, est que le municipalisme peut changer les institutions Moi, je réponds oui. À, à, je, je suis convaincu que, que ça permet de changer l'implication des gens. On le voit déjà, il y, a, il y a beaucoup de gens qui nous écrivent, qui discutent, qui, qui parlent. Alors, il, il, il ils s'impliquent même que sur, sur juste un questionnaire, une, mais en tout cas, ils sont là, ce qui n'était pas le cas avant. Et donc, ça, tout ça, ça change le rapport au pouvoir. Ce qui est, ce qui est difficile, c'est que cela prend du temps, de l'investissement, et, et c'est du temps qu'on va gagner après, mais, mais pour le moment, il faut, il faut accepter de le prendre ce temps. Et, euh, et, et des fois, par exemple, dans notre ville où nous sommes dans la métropole de Bordeaux, la métropole nous demande des réponses pour euh, un mois après euh, sur des sujets. Et, et donc, nous n'avons pas le temps d'organiser la concertation et la, et la participation citoyenne. Donc, il faut, par rapport à ça, il faut vraiment aller vers l'anticipation et, euh, et, et, et faire changer aussi les, les, les institutions, amener le municipalisme à des échelons un peu plus hauts, comme la métropole chez nous.